Hi, welcome to today's episode of Three Things About a World Quilt, which is definitely not the same as Between Two Ferns, and I am definitely not as cool as Zach Galifianakis, but world quilts are definitely cool, so hopefully you will enjoy today's installment. My name is Marin Hansen. I'm the curator of international collections at the International Quilt Museum. Our museum is located at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and like museums all over the United States, we are currently closed to the public. But I want to share some of our collection with you, pieces from all over the world. During this time of social distancing, self-quarantining, and area lockdowns, I think looking at and talking about art and folk art can help us feel closer. Stay tuned as each day this week, I bring you a quick introduction to a new world quilt. So let's dive right into three things about a kejabe from Turkmenistan. So this is a 20th century kejabe. Yeah. And I don't know if any of you already know what this is. It kind of looks like a garment, a cape. Or if we change the scale a little bit, it could be like a funny hat. But in any case, the first thing, thing number one about this Kejabe is that it is a palanquin cover. Now you might ask, what's a palanquin? <laughs> um, and when you look it up online, a lot of times the definition they give is a litter. So we don't use these words all that often anymore. Um, but a litter or a palanquin is a conveyance, a way of getting around, um, an enclosed conveyance. And if you do a Google image search for palanquins, you most often see versions from East and South Asia. So China, India, um, these are the kinds that you most often ha have associated with the word palanquin. And they are usually thought of as human powered, so carried by, you know, four or more humans. And they're often associated with uh, aristocracy, royalty, and brides. Brides in many cultures are often carried in a palanquin. Uh, so these are human powered. Uh, and if you're like me and you love Bollywood, um, you sometimes can think of the excellent Bollywood films, historical Bollywood films, like this one, I believe this is a still from Devdas, and that's Ashwarya Rai Bakchan. So those are the things I associate with Indian palanquins. But if you do a search again for an image search, you'll see that palanquins have been used all over the world. And here are many, many examples on camels uh, from North Africa, from Central Asia. Um, so it, it's a very common uh, form of transportation. And as I said, it's often a ceremonial or for the aristocracy. I did a search and found this really neat uh, example in the Metropolitan Museum of Arts collection. So this is from the 12th or early 13th century. So palanquins have been around for a very long time. This turquoise figurine is uh, from the Turkmen people. Um, so the area of Central Asia that we now call Turkmenistan. So I think this shows, yes, that this, that these palanquins have been around for a very long time and have often been carried on camels. And camels, of course, were and still are a very common form of transportation in Central Asia and other parts of the world. Here's an image of an entire bridal procession from the late 19th century, a photograph. And again, in, uh, the Turkmen people, um, a sub-tribe of the Turkmen people. And so this shows uh, how long of a history this, this ceremonial procession has had in this part of the world. Thing number two, it's talismanic. So uh, what does talismanic mean? Talismanic refers essentially to something having uh, properties that uh, provide spiritual protection or good luck. So we, if we think of the word like a charm or an amulet, those are all talismanic. And on the, uh, in Central Asia, patchwork, um, one of its central roles essentially is to provide talismanic 
protection or spiritual protection. So in the tushtuk or hanging that you see on the left there, you see lots and lots of patchwork. Uh, on the upper right, that's a, a talismanic charm, essentially. Um, and on the bottom right, this historical photograph, you see this is actually a cradle cover, also covered in patchwork. So to protect the baby that's inside that cradle, the patchwork is performing a uh, amuletic or talismanic function. So the um, long bunting, essentially, that um, goes with the Kejabe cover, the palanquin cover, um, is covered in symbols and uh, motifs, all of which provide some form of spiritual or talismanic protection. And actually, in this historical photograph from 1924, you can see that, that those lappets or that um, sort of border uh, gets attached to the bottom of the Kejabe, as you can see here. So uh, there would there is a bride in there somewhere covered on her way to her marriage ceremony or wedding. Uh, thing number three, Turkmenistan. So uh, a lot of us are less familiar with the geography of Central Asia, perhaps, than of other parts of the world. So I wanted to show a map just so that we could all get our bearings and remember where Turkmenistan is actually located. So uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, these are the major um, republics of Central Asia. Um, most, all of them were formerly part of the USSR. And they, it's such an important region of the world, um, cradled sort of in between so many other uh, important parts of the world. So Russia to the west and China to the east, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India to the south. And of course, Central Asia was the main sort of crossroads for the Silk Roads, the Silk Route that went from China to the West. So I thought it was important that we remembered where Turkmenistan is, next to the Caspian Sea there and north of Persia or what is now Iran. And so thank you for joining me for today's installment of Three Things About a World Quilt. I'd like to Thank Chris Martins, who uh, curated an exhibition about these Central Asian patchworks at our museum a few years ago. Uh, everything I know about Central Asian patchwork comes through her, and we would love to have you visit our World Quilts website about Central Asia. So we'll provide a link in the uh, post for you so that you can go check that out and learn a lot more. Thanks a lot. See you next time.